I came as an instructor, instructor in English. And I guess they must have liked me because at the end of my first year, I was promoted to an assistant professor. In Milwaukee, the street lights, you know, had the, the walk signs, and they always said walk with light. I was struck by that. And it came to me that, you know, they may have all kinds of connotations. It's a phrase that can mean anything that you want, given the moment. It simply became part of what I do, and I sign my letters that way today. And it became so much a part of the routine that I remember once, I forget, it was an upper-level class of some sort, and I said, okay, that's it for the day. Everyone just sat. I said, what's the problem? We haven't said the magic words. Okay. Walk with light. Off they went. Occasionally, VWs would show up in strange places, like inside Stuttman, and of course, the famous episode of The Rock inside of Kramer, the rock that's still there. On one occasion, the students papered my office, said that they were going to take over the office, and uh, my reaction was, do you promise, or is that an empty threat? I don't know that there was anti-war sentiment on campus, but there was fear on campus, particularly when we went to high school. Because guess what? We were of draft age. One of our dear friends, uh, high school friends, got drafted. He was sent to Vietnam, and he was killed there. And that was a sobering thing. We were scared. The feel of the campus, the early days, uh, early 60s, it was, it was family. Most students lived on campus. Most students ran into our church work. So even though we all had our sinful streak, nevertheless, there was a commonality about the whole thing. We knew we were grounded and rooted in the gospel. And that was a tremendous blessing. Every morning we had chapel and every evening we had chapel, and it was attended. And I dare say that I could go around and ask people, what was it that kept us together? And they're gonna say, our faith. On April 7th, 1964, Dr. Henry Stutman died the passing of the man who helped found Concordia would be keenly felt. Sam was, uh, Sam was Sam, he was uh, one of a kind. I liked his take on being president. We had two mandatory faculty meetings a year if necessary. And sometimes we did not find them necessary. <laughs> I loved Sam Golderman. He would completely, out of the blue, walk through Killian Hall just to kind of visit with the guys. Uh, and he would come into the room, sit down and talk with you, and, and sometimes you, you did that and you were filled with trepidation because you thought you might be in trouble. On the other, other hand, he would come in and, and just break the ice and, and talk with you, and people genuinely loved him. They were a tight-knit group. When I got there, I found out very quickly they really didn't need me to do their job. My uh, job, it turned out to be, was to provide the opportunity and the encouragement and a little bit of direction for them to do their job. And they were going to do it whether I was there or not. And that I always admired about them. In 1965, Lutheran Concordia College became Concordia Lutheran College. Well, we got accredited. Remember, the school was there for 40 years without being accredited. Didn't need to. 
because all the students went on to other Concordias, all controlled by the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. You should have seen the gleam of envy in the eyes of the accrediting board when I told them I didn't have to raise any money. All the money we needed was provided by our church. Whoever provides the money controls the place. And as the money gets provided less and less by the synod and is provided more from independent sources, uh, the control of what goes on in the institution and the purposes for which it exists will change and will slip out of the grasp of the church body which owns it. But you, know, th th you have to live in the world and you have to deal with that. In 1967, the high school program, no longer financially viable, was discontinued. The ending was bittersweet. Richard Dinda was very much sold in high school and really went to bat for it. Matter of fact, he and I appeared before the board of what used to be Board of Control back in 1966 to do a presentation about why the high school should continue, but we didn't win that battle because the handwriting was on the wall. Yeah, it was probably an idea whose time had come. We had an evening come around one weekend and, and, and there was going to be a wedding in, in held in Giddings. And there were three guys who were planning on going that evening and they invited several of us to go. I had fully intended to go to that wedding. I was looking forward to it. But then I got a call. Seems like this girl that I had been wanting to meet for a long time was available that evening. And I changed my plans to go on a double date with her that, on that particular evening. The next morning, we got the news that the three guys that we had, uh, had invited us to go were killed in a car accident just outside of Giddings. Alvin Pampel, Dennis Nowotny, Larry Luzader. I often scratch my head and wonder why did God, how did it that I, I, didn't, I chose to go out that night instead of going to Giddings? But I did. Now, I'm not the only one who declined that evening, but I'll never ever forget it. 